In Lesson 8, we styled these checkboxes so that they have this nice snappy effect. We kind of put this UI layer on top of the actual functionality of that input checkbox down below. And in Lesson 9, we're going to work on these radio buttons. Now, we've got two things to do. Number one, we've got to add a couple things to the HTML. And then finally, we're going to adjust the CSS. So let me scroll all the way down. You might remember that we've got them in stacks. And then they're each in field sets with radio wrapper as a class going around it. Now, all we need to do is grab the end of each of these. I'll hold down the option key. So I've got three cursors now. And I'm going to add a div at each of these places with the class of check. Now this will be our custom checkbox we're going to add. You can see it actually gives me space for it right now. But now what we're going to do is style all this right here. And this will be, just like we did before, this will be kind of our custom UI. And we'll hide everything else uh, like this input right here. Now we actually will use the label in this case because we don't have any like two options we're choosing between. And this should work just fine for us. All right, so now let's go over to the CSS. And I'm going to scroll down this way and let's go ahead and add in the styling for those radio buttons. All right, so first of all, we've got the legend itself. That is this kind of section right here that gives me the name. We're gonna add some styling for this. So we'll first of all have padding inline. This is just left and right in uh, left to right language. And this will be var of space medium. Remember again that we have a bunch of variables to pick from. We're gonna be using that for pretty much all of these here. Next, we're gonna have a border around this. And this will be our var of custom color, which again will be just determined by whatever color that we choose. So you can see we're adding this little border radius Next, let's add a border radius. And once again, we're going to choose one of our radiuses here. This will be our round of medium. And right now, since I've got that on, you can see it rounding. Otherwise, it would be square. All right, and then finally, I'm going to add a background color once again, just to make sure that if we're over that SVG that's kind of on the back of the page, that uh, we can actually still see the text, the legend itself. Okay, next, let's look at the radio wrapper. So radio wrapper. And if I jump back over to the HTML, you'll remember that this is the entire field set. So it's this kind of this line right here that goes around everything. We want to provide our own custom styling there as well. Now I'm actually going to grab a bunch of this because we're going to use a lot of this. So let's go ahead and start with that. And I'm actually going to not just have this inline. We're going to have this everywhere. But I'm going to decrease it just a little bit to extra small. That border should work just the same. Border radius works as well. The background color is great as well. But I also want to add a display of flex. And that way, these items stack next to each other. And we want to make sure that they can wrap. So on smaller screens, that they wrap down below. And uh, I'll show you that here in just a second. And with this flex, I do also want to provide a gap. So I tell it how far these things should be spaced apart. So we'll do a small spacing between each of these. So we've now got these individual things stacked. But we want the actual checks next to their label as well. So if I jump back over to the HTML, that would be right here. We want these stacked next to each other. So let me go ahead and come over this way. And we're going to grab that radio class. And here I'm going to also declare a local variable called size. So that will just be scoped here to the radio class. Display a flex, a gap, a var, space, 2x small. So we're going to get even smaller between those two. When I save it, you can see they already kind of snap out that way. Now, just like before, we're going to actually hide this right here. We're going to have a custom checkbox instead. So in order to get that all to work properly, I need to do position of relative here on the parent. That way I can take the checkbox or the radio button in this case and use position absolute there. Speaking of that radio, let's go ahead and grab the type of radio. And here I'm going to do position of absolute. We'll do inset of zero and then cursor of pointer. So once again, if you look here, you can see that we're actually kind of expanding it to this entire section. And just to make sure that's clear, if I come in here and say background red, you can see it's actually going to fill out the whole section. And once again, the browser doesn't show that UI. But even over here, I'm technically still selecting that. All right, so let's get rid of this. And then let's go ahead and just also say opacity of 0. Now that you know where that's at, we're going to hide it. Now, we do need to create our custom little checkbox here that we can toggle on or off visibly. But again, the functionality is actually just the, the type of radio here. So that we call check. Here, I want to add a border. And this, again, will be 2 pixels, solid, var, and I'll use my custom color. Next, let's add a border radius. And this will be my full rounded option. And that way, when I am rounded, you'll see it as a full circle. In order for it to be a full circle, though, I need to set the width and the height. So here, I'm going to use the size that we just set up top for both the width and also for the height. So you can see now it's a full circle, whereas if it's not, if it's square, it'll be a full square. Finally, I'm going to set the background color here to my var uh, background. Now I'm setting the background color here so I can transition to it. So I'll transition on the background color. And this will be for 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds, I think is how we did it up top. And this will be my ease elastic as well. 
All right, because of what I want to do is whenever the actual type of radio is checked, if I come back over here, whenever this is checked, I want to toggle this right here to show a checked status. So here I'm going to grab my type of radio. I'm going to say whenever it's checked, I want to grab its sibling of check. I'm going to set the background color here to my var of custom color. All right, so there you go. You see how it toggles on. I can actually switch here, and you see it swaps over that way. We get a nice little animation as well as it kind of snaps over that way. Now, one more thing to note, you might remember we had to add our own custom focus states here. The same thing is true down here, because if I toggle, I'm actually selected on this. Well, I think on this one, but I can't tell. So what we're going to do is copy this same thing right here, except in this case, what I want to know is not when it's checked, but when it's focus visible. This is like tabbing to it. In that case, I'm actually going to come up here and let's steal this box shadow right here. All right, so I'm going to grab this and we'll drop it in right here. Now you can also make some of these CSS variables if you don't want to have to retype these out, but you can see now there I am, I can toggle. And if I hit the keys to the left or right, now it'll actually switch for me there. Now you may also may not like that animation there. So you can take that off as well if you want to. That's just this right here. Or maybe you want to change this to something else like ease in and out. So let me try that just to show you the difference between the two. If I come down here and I move over, you see it's a little less jarring as it switches between them. But whatever you want, I, maybe I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, there's just one more thing we need to do, and that is if I start to pull this out all the way, you'll see that this starts to expand quite a bit. And I actually want these to kind of be next to each other. So what I'm going to do, because these are flex children of this parent flex container, I'm going to add a media query. And this will be the only one we're going to use. And min width, we're going to set this at 465 pixels. Now, whenever I get larger than that, I want to do a couple of things. I want to take the radio wrapper right here. And if I come back over this way, that's the field set. All right, I want to take that radio wrapper, and I also want to take the stack. That is this section and this section right here. I want to take both of those things, and I'm going to set their max width to fit content. Now, that will basically take up the size they need and no more. So if I get smaller than 465, which I might need to do here in the dev tools, so right like this, you can see if I get smaller than that, they'll actually take up the full width, and then as soon as I hit 465, they snap to only taking up the space they need and no more. Now, that is also the same time where I want to do something just to the stack itself. The stack would be this and this. These are two separate stacks. And what I want to do there is provide some flex direction here. So I'm saying expand equally, shrink equally, and try to take up about 40%. And once I do that, they'll actually stack right next to each other, and you can see that happening in real time. Now, one other thing to note, you may actually want to also have this legend to where it's fit content only. So if I come back up this way, actually, maybe I already did that. So I think it's just kind of exactly where we're at. Let's just double check. So with this fit content, yeah, that's not going to make a difference because it actually is kind of wrapping. So you might have a little bit there and you can adjust that differently if you want to. Like you could make this min content. And in that case, it would take up only the minimum. The hard thing is that then it will never expand beyond that. You'll always have two lines. And so I think overall, I can handle a couple pixels where it's a little awkward like that. That's okay. And then eventually it'll snap up that way. Now, you may notice that we don't actually have these down this way. And that's because we never added them in the HTML, which I don't think was intentional. <laughs> I think I just forgot. So right here, I'm going to grab both of these and one more. We'll come in here. And these are just the class of check. And the cool thing is now it's there because it's just CSS, again, as kind of like a, a UI layer on top of the actual thing that's changing each of those properties. All right, and that is lesson nine all done. Let me come up to the blog settings app, the kind of finalized code, because in the next one, I'm going to show you how you can add custom themes like this 90s Dracula material. We're going to do all of that. And I'll give you a hint. It's very similar to how we did the light and dark, but I just wanted to separate that out as kind of an extra feature on top of light, dark, and system, which are kind of the three normal ones you might add. Okay, so in the next video, we'll add those more customized options, and this will be our final video in the series. I'll see you there.